Quinn. Welcome to live stream number 125. My name is Lars Christensen and uh, today's topic is how to make raised letters on a curved surface. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to join today's live stream. Uh, yes, if you're wondering 125, so last Thursday I did 125 for Cam but ran into some issues. It was on my end. I hope that I figured out what was wrong. If things act up again, then I gotta do some more stuff. But so I'm just gonna rewash 125 from last Thursday and redo it that this Thursday. So that's gonna be 127 because tomorrow is Facebook Live. Okay. How you doing, man? Hope you're doing good. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to uh, model up a. Um, we're gonna model up this. I guess like a dog water bowl kind of thing. Uh, but what we're really gonna concentrate on is the text. Uh, the raised letters uh, on uh, this curved surface and make sure the letters are kind of curved with it too. Um, I did get a, uh, a, a one of the comments when I put out for the live stream topic that they had watched some other videos and they hope that my method is easier than the other videos out on YouTube. I don't know if that's, I hope so. Um, just remember, if this suddenly gets a little overwhelming, just go back, rewatch it again, right? Drag the little cur red cursor back and rewatch it again. This is not going to be very necessarily uh, very complicated tools, but there is going to be some sketching involved with it. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to model up this bowl. So if you're just here for the raised letters, just to be a little bit patient with me, um, I just want to start from scratch because that's what I like like to do. Okay, so uh, let's just get rid of this one. Get rid of that. Um, I just see here there's why I'm always out of focus. Make sure that you hit the little gear icon down uh, in your screen and make sure you put it to the highest resolution. But for live stream is 720 only. So make sure you do that. Uh, I should be somewhat in focus. Shouldn't be totally grainy. Okay, so let's do this bowl. I'm gonna start out with a bowl first. Start with a, a completely empty file here. And uh, let's start a new sketch for this dark bowl. And I'm just gonna sketch here on uh, the front plane. Doesn't really matter too much what we're gonna do. Now what I'm gonna do here is, and I do this sometimes, it helps me, um, is making a rectangular box to kind of like define where my sketch is going to be within. So I know my sketch is going to be 200 millimeters tall. And then I can hit tab on my keyboard and I'm going to make it 450 long. Just hit like, so now I have kind of like the boundary for my, my half of my dark bowl because a drinking bowl, because I'm going to use the revolve. Remember anything that is round we do with revolve. Now I'm gonna use the spline tool here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit spline and I'm gonna start the spline right on this vertical line here. And then I'm gonna place a point somewhat, and some people when they do splines, they click multiple points, don't do that. Uh, but I'm gonna, you're gonna put a point wherever the transition is for, for, your, uh, for your parts. I'm gonna left click here. I'm gonna left click up here on my 200 horizontal line. I'm going to click somewhere over around here and then I'm going to finally close it off uh, down to the corner of the 450 down here. And then I'm going to hit the little green check mark. So now we have uh, a spline going here that's kind of like going to shape this um, dark disc. I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard to get out of the sp spline tool. So if you look at my cursor right now, 3, 2, 1, now you see I have kind of like that white cursor there. Okay, so here we have the spline, and I know some people, you guys are already very com comfortable with splines, um, but some people are not. One thing I like to do with splines is I like to actually use these constraints over here um, to kind of like help lining down the spline. So if I hit the horizontal vertical over here, and I click on this spline handle right here, that becomes a horizontal. I'm going to click on this spline handle up on top too make that horizontal, and then I'm also gonna make this uh, vertical by clicking on that. 
hit escape to get out of this. So what I've really just done is I've just restricted these spline handles a little bit and that gives me, these spline handles gives me a little bit of a chance to kind of like just control the shape where the other ones here kind of like it's going to give me more flexibility to where I think that I think that this bowl looks somewhat decent. I'm just going to leave it with this here. Now, many times, and we've done this in live streams before, where we fully define spline. I don't like this spline. I like this shape. It's going to be a little deeper. Poor dogs are not going to be any water in it. There we go. Um, uh, many times we talk about we can fully define these splines completely with dimensions, and I've done that in previous live streams, but I do prefer to just right click on them and hit fix. So now that is fixed. So we're going to fully define our sketches, right? The only trick about this is that um, if I decided that I was going to make it longer and make this 500, I can't. I get an, an, an error because I fixed this spline and it's attached to here. So you will just have to right click, unfix the spline, change this dimension. Of course, what will also kind of like pull in the spline. But that's how you would get get by that. Just want to make sure that uh, that we all get with that. Okay, right click and um, and fix that. Okay, now I'm going to just do a quick revolve uh, from this point. And by the way, um, many times you would have seen that we make these lines up here as construction geometry. This one over here, we actually don't have to inside of Fusion. Um, so I'm just going to go over here to revolve. And uh, I'm just going to select that area here and I'm going to revolve around this axis and uh, there is uh, my kind of uh, dark bowl that I'm going to I'm going to call this uh, my, my dark bowl here. Uh, nothing too too fancy. Um, you can of course always go in and edit this. I see. I think I want to make this uh, edge a little bit more. Oh no, I locked it. Right click. Unfix it. I think I want to make this. Oh, I didn't do it. Unfix. No. There we go. Uh, I think I want to make this a little bit more. Can I move this? What did I do? No. Why can't I move this? Somebody in the chat, what did I do? Let me just delete that relationship for a second. Select that spline point. Oh, that's interesting. That works. For some reason I can't drag on the spline point. That's okay. I just wanted this one to be a little, I didn't want it to be straight right here. I'm just gonna right click make it there we go um i'll show you what i was talking about right click and fix it hit okay i wanted this curve to be more there was like a line going around i wanted it to be more i wanted it to be a curve i don't want it to be an argo line i wanted to make it real okay uh so um with this here um then of course it's a solid block so you could use a uh, shell the shell command so like the bottom face here Give it 40, and now we have uh, kind of shelled out this bowl here. Uh, and before I get to the lettering, you could also, if I delete the shell, you could also right click edit. You could also have gone in here and hit O for offset, and you could have offset this line in 40, right? That would have done kind of the same thing. And then uh, we could have attached the line down here, revolved that around. But I really don't, if, if I know that this thickness might change, uh, the thickness of the whole bowl, I actually rather want it as a feature than start doing the sketches. Especially if I know somebody else have to mess around with my parts, I rather want it to be a feature than them going in, diving into complete, uh, complex, um, complex sketch geometry. Okay. Oof. All right, folks. So with this done, uh, let's get on to this curved lettering. So you can kind of see how, if we're looking on the front here, we can see how we got this curved surface right here. Um, so this is my way that I will do this. So 
I'm going to turn on the origin and we get the three planes that shows up. And I'm going to start a, uh, a sketch uh, right on uh, this face right here. Okay, so I'm looking back at the front here. Then I'm going to draw two lines. I'm going to hit alpha line. I'm going to draw two lines. I'm going to draw one line out here somewhere out here. And then I'm going to draw a line that I think is somewhat tangent to um, to this somewhat tangent to this cur curved surface. Now I I know that we can't make a tangent like that is a tangent plane up here, but we can't really do that because this is not tangent. This is a curve, right? It's not an arc. Um, so I'm going to do this line. I'm going to hit D for dimension just to make it a little bit easier for us, and I'm going to place a Make this one 500. So I'm just going to make sure this line is outside from the surface. And then I'm going to place an angle here. And uh, I'm just going to round it up to about 80. That's probably pretty good. And then just to fully define the sketch, we could go ahead and make this 200. The reason I'm going through this is because I'm going to have to create this for each different letter that we have to put on this ball. I'll show you just in a second what I mean by that. Uh, so if I hit stop sketch, this sketch here was drawn on this face, right? And it's just a line coming out and going up in, in an angle here. Now I'm gonna have to create one of these for each letter that's kind of like it's gonna go around this one. Um, but just so you get an idea about what I'm heading at, let me just create one letter so you can see it. So now with this line created, I hope this is not confusing. Like I said, I'm gonna repeat it a couple of times. So hopefully you get it then. And just remember, you can rewind back if, if, if this gets a little confusing. But check this out. So we have that line uh, sitting right there with that angular line. Um, if we go in here and I do a plane at an angle. So up in the construction, plane at an angle. And I select on this line that we just created in 80 degrees. I actually get a plane uh, that goes through that. And I can rotate it. 90 degrees. So now I have a plane that is somewhat very close to be uh, perpendicular or tangent to our curve here sitting right here. So I'm going to hit OK to that. And that's where I'm going to sketch my letter on. So I'm going to right click on that plane and create a sketch. Or you could select up here and select that same thing. So now we're looking at it. We're looking at it a little bit in an angle. I'm going to go ahead here and say create a text and I'm just going to place my letter a little bit away from anything like in here and then type in the letter. So I'm going to do this short. So I'm going to call it Rex. Um, you can't see the letter because it's pretty small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, that is <laughs> Rex is laying down. Uh, let's just rotate that up right about there. So that's pretty good. And then I'm going to use this origin right here as kind of my general consensus of about what I think is the middle of that R. Hit OK. And what do we have now? Now we have a sketch sitting on that plane here. Now we can extrude this one. So I'm going to hit a Q and I'm going to extrude that. Now you can extrude it this way or this way down here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to an object. And then I'm going to to an object on the extrusion bar and select that face. And this R have now just, and I'm going to hit OK, let it join it, has now just started from out here and gone down and become, you know, fluent with this surface here. So this is the trick to do this uh, for each different letter. Now, um, of course, the way I started out was to use this plane here. Well, I don't have a plane that is this got to be in an angle, right? This rack's got to stand in an angle. So we're going to use the same tool we use to create the plane for the R. And that was that plane at an angle. So now I'm going to repeat the whole thing I just did. So if this was, holy crap, this was confusing. Then we're going to repeat it again two times. So I'm going to, so, but this time I'm going to hit plane on an angle. I'm going to select the, the center uh, origin here. And that will actually let me create a, a plane. Now, for some reason, I'm going to hide the body for a second. 
For some reason, that plane is tiny. I don't know why it's tiny. Um, so I'm gonna take this plane here and I'm gonna make it 20 degrees. And this is, of course, whatever you're trying to work. So now I'm creating a little plane sitting here. I'm gonna hit okay. That is sitting in 20 degrees. Now I'm gonna start a sketch on that. Let me turn the body back on. Well, actually, let me select it first. New sketch on that little plane right there, the 20 degrees plane. Turn the body back on. Hit alpha line. And I'm gonna do the same thing as you just saw me do before. I'm gonna draw a line out and go up at an angle and hit okay. I'm gonna do the same dimensions as I did before. So this is why it's good to kind of like to remember them. I'm gonna make it 500. We decided to make this one 80. And I just fully defined the sketch. This one probably is not so important, but just for some consistency, okay? So now we have another sketch sitting right here now let's create, repeat that um, one more time so you get that. So what I did, let me hide the body, I created a tangent plane over this center line right here. No, not a tangent plane. Somebody yell a plane on an angle through this one here. And the first one was zero, the next one was 20. So let's go ahead and make this one 40. Like I said, they're kind of hard to see. Hit OK. So now the 40 degrees sitting in there. Let's start a sketch on that. Right there. And uh, let's turn the bodies back on and do alpha line and do this one more time. Okay. And do the same thing. D for dimension. So you're going to have to do this for, for each uh, different letter that you want to place. So uh, I picked rags because, you know, you don't want, if your dog has a long name, then, <laughs> okay. So this is the free sketches that we need. So now we're gonna continue doing what we just did before. Uh, we're gonna go in and create another plane on an angle. We're gonna select this line this time. And uh, it kind of, you can either do the math. I mean, this is just pretty straightforward math, right? But. A little bit easier if you drag it in here. Well, that's gonna be 70. Hit okay for that. And uh, then we can right click on that. Say create sketch. I'm gonna go up here and say text. And I'm gonna place it somewhere out here in space. It's gonna be an E. 150 was a good number. I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, and I'm gonna place it. So again, I'm gonna kind of like use that origin right there as my kind of guidance for that. Hit okay. And then we can hit Q, hit that letter, pull the arrow out, right? But I'm gonna go over here to the extrude. I'm gonna say to an object. So make sure that it snaps to that face here of the ball, okay? One last one. So go up here, go to plane on an angle. Click this line this time. I like to go up to on top. Somebody have already done the math. Rotate it. I'm not that smart. Is that would that be 50? Doesn't look like 50. Maybe that's 50. Okay. Probably work. And uh, right click, create sketch. Go up to the letter you want. Place that somewhere here. It's gonna be an X. Make it 150. I am going to rotate it. And then place that one. That's gonna be easy right there in the center there. Hit OK and hit Q. And then I'm gonna do to an object and uh, select that face there. And now we have these letters going in the bowl. Uh, I'm just gonna hide the sketches for a second. I don't need those looking at those. Okay, so we got this now, and this is, you know, this is kind of like, we're halfway there. Um, the Really the only thing we have to do now is we kind of like have to trim the letters to kind of like follow this curve here. So um, to do that, I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. I think it's a neat little trick. We're gonna go over to the patch workspace. Now, this is normally when we talk surfaces and things like that. 
Um, and uh, um, I have made some live streams on this. So if, if, if all this is, is just, you know, to send me an email, Lars at Christensen at Autodesk.com. It's down in the description area. Uh, and I'll send you some links to those videos. Go to the patch. Here, that is one that is called Offset. So it's right under Create, Offset. And you could go in here and you can offset this face here. And you probably don't want to offset it too much. You just need a little bump, right? So I'm going to do it like five and hit OK. Now, what I got now, when we look over here in the bodies folder, you will see I got a surface body. Let me just hide the body. And you will see that I got a surface body that was offset five millimeters from uh, that body here. But you will also see that because I did it at this point, it kind of prevented uh, the letters are not there. And I actually want, I don't want the letters in this because I'm gonna be using this to cut with. Well, here's an interesting thing. I just wanna kind of like show you this. For, remember that things down here in your timeline, you can move it back. So we can actually take this here, hold down left mouse button. I can actually drag it all the way down to where right before uh, right after I did that revolve, where that surface was created and let go. Now that is sitting down there. And when that happened, you see when I let go, it um, it healed that up because the timeline down here is, is continuous, right? So if I grab this and drag it back again, now you will see that now it has the, the numbers in it because this surface, but we can drag it down after this function because that was the face we selected. I hope that makes sense. So this is actually what I want. Okay, so that was just a neat little trick. Okay, so what we got is we got our dog bowl and then we got this little offset surface. I hope you can see it's sitting right here. It's like a non-thick surface. So with that, I'm gonna go into my model environment. I'm gonna go into modify and you can split a body. We've used this one before too, if you ever follow the live streams. Split body, what do we want to split? We want to split the dog bowl, right? Select that body. What is our splitting tool? That is that surface we just created. I'm gonna extend splitting tools here and hit okay. Now you will see nothing really happened on your screen, but something happened over here. We actually got uh, some extra bodies. And what have happened is if we hide these extra bodies, right? And we hide that surface we just created, then the original body, that surface just trimmed uh, those letters to, to go uh, around there. Now, I would probably delete these. Well, I would not delete them. Right click on that body. Don't delete them. Use the remove. The delete in, in Fusion will try to patch things up. The remove becomes a feature down in your timeline that has a that has a, uh, that is recorded down in the timeline where delete will actually try to heal your body. In this case here, we're just removing these, just like that. I will probably clean it up like that. And, uh, and then we have that curved uh, surface uh, right there. The last thing I did in mine, because I like to do that, right click appearances and uh, go to paint, select some kind of a, Paint. I decided mine's gonna be red, and uh, and there is uh, Rex's new uh, drinking bowl uh, for for him there. So I hope, as always, you let me know. Thumbs up if this is good. Thumbs down if it's if it's not good. Be honest, please. I read all the comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, your feedback means the world to me. So there was a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, about placing the letters, uh, placing the planes, uh, but this is really some some really good tools, I think, to kind of like get used to. So even if you have the time to kind of like practice, uh, and I'll send you this model. If you send me an email and says, hey, could you please provide the model? I'll send it to you. Um, that, you know, getting, getting used to using some of these different tools, like this plane to angle, can really, really uh, 
be helpful. And then of course, like I think that using something like split body, uh, you know, that is uh, that is that is just that is just cool stuff. <sighs> so, hope this was useful, friends. Tomorrow uh, it's Facebook, same time. Uh, if you search "add Mr. Lars Christensen," uh, you should find me there. Tomorrow's absolute beginner have a pretty cool part. It's almost like a it's it's supposed to be a gear, but I almost think it's like a performance race tire type um, pattern at least. We're gonna do that tomorrow on the absolute beginner. Uh, on Thursday we didn't have any issues today, so that's awesome. So on Thursday we're gonna attempt to do uh, the stock setup for Cam uh, and and hopefully get that wrapped up. You guys are the best, man. Uh, really appreciate all you guys taking the time to join these live streams and also you guys who's watching them afterwards. I know these times don't always work. I truly, truly believe it. Uh, that, that, you know, I, I truly believe it. I truly appreciate it. That's what I was trying to say. So I'm going to end it here. As always, I am going to uh, end the broadcast. So if you watch the recording, thank you so much. And then I'm going to jump into the live stream chat and uh, say hi to everybody in there. So. Oh, and by the way, I should say the one on Facebook tomorrow will be posted here on YouTube over the weekend. So you're not going to miss it if you if you don't want to go to Facebook. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.